Pepe Gang, honestly, on a struggle bus right now, down 2-0. Close maps, albeit against Divine Ascension, but they have to run it back all the way. A reverse sweep against the un I mean, undefeated team right now of Divine Ascension. There is a major challenge against the frogs that we have on the server right now, but this is going to be map three of bind when we get into it. We'll see when the teams are readied up. It looks like we will... Oh, yeah, go hold for just a second, but this is going to be a very, very struggle bus. I, I just... What was that? I don't even know what that was. <laughs> But Bind, yeah. I mentioned how Icebox was difficult for frogs, given the fact that they're amphibians, but this one is going to dry them up, honestly. I don't, th this is going to be a difficult one. Uh, yeah, it's going to, it's going to definitely be pretty <laughs> hard. They have to reverse sweep all the way through with every single game from here on out if they want to make it to the grand finals of this phantom series da on the other hand they just gotta win this one out it is their map pick as well they picked out bind it is something that is a little bit better for viper who you know viper only so far has played viper only living up to his name so we'll see if they have some spicy strats for bind or if da is really just going to run through this map as they have the past two i mean surely they have to i think well, like we both said viper is She's an ascent on this map, unlike like I mentioned before in the in the very very pregame before we even got the bands done, or after, directly after the bands done. Haven being the last map, I'm surprised again. Divine Ascension didn't end up picking that map for one of their one of their picks and not just leaving it until the end because we all know Pepe Gang. They they have no desire to play any of the maps that Viper is not very good on on the sense and of course it didn't work out very well. And on Haven, they don't look good with it. We've seen them play on it. They just don't play a Viper. And that really just kind of handicaps Viper only because it's kind of obvious why. Uh so whatever the case, bind I would think looks better for them. Again, I I, I thought that they had to win that icebox again. Cause Again, there is a there is a chance for Bind. I, I do have faith, especially after Taps started fragging in the second half of that map of Icebox. But they've got another one to go through, right? It's not just Bind. They've got a split. And that one's going to be, I feel like, even harder if they don't end up winning this. But it looks like, are they? No, we're just getting dabs in the chat. I thought they were ready, but no, they're actually just straight up dabbing. Um, yeah, I, well, I don't know, man, Sparky. It's, it's going to be a rough one for sure. So far, we've had double controller setups from pepe gang in the last two maps you know it works out on some maps but i feel like they're really struggling since they don't have that sentinel it's hard for them to prevent again put get prevent against sorry the sheer aggression from da as they're pretty much able to walk onto the sites the viper can't say a whole lot about that on a sense we saw you know the one way come through the mollies can just pretty much be walked through and not a whole lot was punished even on icebox you know the viper can have some sort of sentinel setup but you know the smoke is only on one level you can't have it prevent sight lines on both levels only the curtain can do that and you can't really prevent against a push on that a site either so maybe bind like you said you know it's it's something that's a little bit more two-dimensional you don't have that verticality as much and they'll be able to use those viper spits in each of the chokes in order to get map control for themselves and if viper only can pop off he has been at the bottom of the scoreboard so far from you know both of the maps if he has that post plant step as well maybe they can come back into this map yeah definitely not only that but he, he i think he's one of the ones that don't end up fragging that hard for the side of pepe gang as well so once again if he can have that impact in, in not only utility usage but the fact that this is a more comfortable map for his agent maybe he has the potential to not only match but maybe go above taps ending up with that second controller at the top of the score because that's what you want to see right when you have certain players that are still controller players but they're still able to frag out like any other that is the value that you need when you want to beat out a team like da and of course like that some sometimes you see people like uh sub rosa on that omen he hasn't played that for quite a while but back when though there was good days when you saw him on that because that you know that it's a reliable fragger on this player that can also play smokes and he can hold his own at the back of a site or maybe at the front lines if you want to throw a paranoia and just delay. Just hold it down, lock it down, just wait for the team to rotate, stuff like that. And that's kind of what Viper is basically used for, right? Because it's just stalling tactics. You've got mollies, you've got, um, oh yeah, we're okay, <laughs> ready to go. But um, we are going to get into this Asian fig of mine. Sorry, I am hosting the lobby right now because some for some reason, Riot, please let us uh, let us transfer hosts, but never mind. <laughs> um yeah so yeah. If, if he can handle that if he can have that stalling potential then this is definitely a much better showing for pepe gang in my opinion
And just like that, Viper only picks up that Viper in the first couple seconds of Agent Select itself. Oh See the gosh. Brim hovers, but honestly, I expect Teddy to be on that jet. I expect remilitarization to be on that Reyna. Maybe even we see that raise come out we haven't seen either of these teams play it so far raise is probably the best duelist on bind since you have that lineup with the boom bot that can clear up all of hookah you have those dates can, that can clear out any of these pockets or even get some sort of denial and that rocket you know the the pathways to each of the maps you know be long uh hookah u-haul all of these places are really ice they're really small they're very corridory and that's mm -hmm. really where raise excels since you can use that rocket easily it's hard to really get away from it yeah i, I absolutely love the setup from pepe gang here just keep that um well actually the, oh, the question nadata on the sova that is an interesting one he decides to give up the jet to Njula. i'm not sure if that's going to provide the same amount of impact that they really end up needing in this bind but whatever the case again they're the ones that are playing. I, I don't exactly know what their internals are, but Oatmeal and Nijula both on those fraggers this time, switching off the Sentinel or switching off the initiator role. So fair enough. I mean, do what they want to do. And we see a Brimstone actually on Ad. That is curious as well. Another agent select, um, another role swap from the side of Ad and Wives. We see Smokes on Ad this time, Wives on that Sage for the Sentinel. Other than that, everything is literally staying the same. So Pepe Gang being a bit more experimental, in my opinion, Divine Ascension and taking a risk with that Brim. I can see why they want to bring it. They, there is potential for that Mollies to handle post plants very well. And Pepe Gang have the Viper for the same reason. But even still, Brim is very, very much out of the meta right now. We'll see what Divine Ascension have in store. Yeah, I actually like the Brim on this map. You know, that ultimate, the orbital strike can be used in both Hookah and U-Haul to just kind of clear out the space and actually get quite a few kills for yourself since it's so hard to get out of those closed areas. And mm -hmm. the smokes, you know, they might be a little bit smaller, but they're 20-second smokes. They're going to last a little bit longer. That's going to allow you to try and sneak past them a little bit more. You don't have to make as much noise since you don't have to just try timing the smoke quite a bit. It is going to be yet again pepe gang on the defense playing towards this three stack on a which is where rush is so far heading this just happens every single time it doesn't matter what the map is we see hey a push five men up for da every single time straight through ad goes and like you mentioned the smokes last so very long there's, there's nothing that any of these players can do they smoke out all the default angles all the close shots and but the thing is, a Viper only goes right through. Gets a nice right click and even more potential for damage, but a Ooh. dink straight through as well. Counter onto that Sova, and it's all turning up green, though. Health low on two members of Pepe Gang, but they have the sight control. Oh. But that's Last the problem with the low HP. Add straight through the smoke. Gets a very, very lucky shot and follows up with a follow up headshot in an Azula. That's a crazy two versus four for DA. I was going to say this wall quick plant is good in order to get the spike ticking down, but it gives you so little area in order to move around and get yourself some kills. And it kind of isolates you towards a short, a beautiful shock dart evens it up. And then with the brimstone in order to close it down is going to be DA buying up into this next round. And they're looking at Spectre so far, not going to buy up towards those rifles that they were known for in the last map. It was a shorty on Ajula, but he's in spawn and everyone else is a pistol, so should be a fairly standard round. The one way I don't think will be too potent. Playing slow, Divine Ascension don't want to take any good risk. I mean, wow. They are really respecting Pepe Gang here. They're playing so far back. They're waiting out this one way and they're timing it just perfectly. It goes down as soon as the drone goes through and the recon even spots out Viper only. So the one defender on this site is going to get jumped on by Teddy. Straight over the truck and Oatmeal tries to go for a challenge and Teddy wants to just run and gun and he gets the second frag as well. Up into heaven he goes, spots out all three players in fact and the dash straight through. Not gonna have a success this time, the Jula. Not fast enough on the reset. Teddy with four in the round, dashing up forward. I mean, he's trying to be the Korean right now, but Wives denies the ace. Feels a bit bad, but Divine Ascension is still clean. Oh, come on. You got to give those ones to Teddy, man. He literally just ran through the entire site, updrafted into right. heaven, still got every single pick. Like, you just got to give those to your teammate at that point. But either <laughs> way is going to be the bonus for DA. They were able to keep every single one of their guns alive. And 
now rifles in hand for pepe gang this is where they need to make their appearance natural is gonna peek out aggressively but just five people staring him down here's the jumps he hears them and he's not ready he was mentally prepared for the player up close just hopping up to that hookah position but there's a wide peek as well and tapas on the site he's pushed up in a very awkward angle and vima lends a nice shot i mean he plays his kovacs you can tell Tops gets taken out right there and then three players just hold up in a spawn. They have no choice but to wait for the molly, wait for the smoke. They can't get out. There is no omen to flash. There is even Teddy peeking on the spawn position, taking two names for himself and even more sprays onto the spawn as well. And Teddy goes back out after the reload and secures the third frag on the third round. Yeah, back to back, back to back flawlesses as well means that the economy. Look at that money, man. They could buy so much with 6k in each of their pockets, as well as picking up the rifles from the enemy team. Pepe Gang, not a good start to this map. They'll save up just some actually looking to buy up towards those uh towards those judges they're going to buy up. viper only is the only person he doesn't have the ultimate available as well but they're going aggressive on this a short this is interesting doth in the corner it's a possibility they've got a crossfire on this and teddy's not going to check the corner unwise and they managed to get back <laughs> oh, no viper only's trying to cover and he's the one that gets taken out of the equation that's a bit unfortunate, but at least the, you can argue the stronger player on the Doth is still sitting on the site, but Oatmeal gets aggressive through the smokes. They must know that at least someone else is on this A because the judge oh. is still at. But wait, the kills! How is this happening? He's got both frags on the wall. What is happening right now? It doesn't make any sense. Low HP for the Sova, but the time is so in his favor. There's so much for Remo to play with, though. He can go from absolutely anywhere. He chooses to spawn. And the Sova on the Pepe gang, he's the one to he's the only one on the team with more than one kill. So if anyone's gonna clutch out the round, it's gonna be him right now. 14 HP, recon going out. I I don't even think there's any information on where that recon would yeah. be coming from. And it, it doesn't land. He okay, he just winged the lineup. It didn't it didn't actually spot anything. So he doesn't actually know if Remo's on the site or not. The time is ticking. 30 seconds for him to make the rotate all the way from B through spawn to try and pick up the spike, but he has to clear every single angle because he has no idea where this final player is. In one headshot, we know how well Nadalta can land those. That's all that he needs to secure this round. 14 HP, so that's not only what he can do, but that's what he needs as well. And the teleport goes through. I mean, he, he kind of has to follow, and information may be given out at this point. Yeah, he's going to check his back. Lucky for him, Remill is not just staying in there, but the recon's gonna go out. Head spotted. Oh. Wait a minute, there's a chance. The wall bang's not gonna land either. Getting aggressive. Remill wants to take the fight again. He knows how low the Sova is. That's the perfect decision. A triple kill on the round, securing all the way through that P, rotating back through the entire map and securing the kill at the end of the day. Divine Ascension stay flawless in the round counts. Def definitely got a little bit close towards the end, but that's the thing about these smokes, right? You can hide in them so easily from Broomstone if you don't put that wall up as well. You see most people in order to defend against Ooh. this will just spam the smokes, make sure that no one can pretty safely hide in them, but the decision was not made from D and it, DA and it bites them in the butt. Their money is still pretty good. Teddy is on that operator now and so is Najula. They're both looking towards Ooh. this B main. Najula goes on top though. Yeah, that's an instant fight, and we haven't seen that this map at least. It's good to see Najula Ishli chiming in for his team. He needs to end up waking up because so far it's not him that's had the impact in the two players that have played the Jet on their team. That is a good shot, though. His second one to be had, and on to add they go, and he keeps adding to the tally as well. Remill to try and answer back. He opens up that A site, but the spike is now under Najula's control and a fourth kill even. I mean, they all just end up dropping one by one. Remill now on. Maybe an ace for Najula. He's holding the angle in a very, very bright spot. Misses the shot though. Picks up the second operator and Remill has got the advanced position. Has the information on where this guy is. Tries to bait on a shot, but it's not gonna work. From behind, the ace is denied, but Tab secures the round. First one for Pepe Gang off a of 4K from the Jets. 
not even a whole lot to say there, right? Najula just gets peeked one by one. Some utility is thrown at him, but nothing to really force him out of the corner. Some slows aren't going to prevent him from doing that. He'll still be able to peek out and get these picks. Najula goes big. That gets the first on the board for Pepe Gang. They just need to ride this momentum through. Najula is going to go over towards this A site now, <laughs> try and mix it up a little bit, not know where this operator is and get those early picks for his team. Ooh, early fix. Hello, good night, drone. Drives him off, but he still holds the angle, and Remill, he gets aggressive as well, wants to punish for that drop off, and it just doesn't work. The res has to come out, the wall even, to deny any retaliation, but now they understand that there's at least three on this site. They hear the Judds, they hear the Odin, and the op was spotted before. Sova, though, how aggressive does he want to get? Najula is just holding the angle, and you can be sure that if this Sova peaks, there's no way that player is winning this fight. Najula is on and posted, and that's a headshot, even overkill on a Toucan. Now they still understand this jet has not moved, and even Nadata holding down short with an Odin. Remo, once again, he's the only player to answer back on the other side of the map. Teddy is here as well, but with the Opfader lurking through the smoke tops, uh, does he hear? I'm not entirely sure if he had the audio cue for that one, but nonetheless, Teddy does get away alive, and Adatha even tries to go for an ultimate, but getting aggressive, Remil gets another pick, tops in the corner, needs to try and get out, but he doesn't hit the teleport in time, and Ad manages to finally shut him down. Two versus two on the spike site, Najula pops the knives, wants to get all the way through. He knows the op is not the best tool for the job, but he doesn't check the corner, and Remo's got a 4k spray down. Great transfer between the final two kills and secures five for DA. Oh man, it definitely got a little bit dicey towards the end. This was such an aggressive T3 from Taps. I'm surprised that actually kind of worked out for him, and he's able to get that opper out of the way. Unfortunately, it doesn't still work out for them. Najula in this next round is still going to be back on that operator. Has had so much impact so far. But the thing is, if they don't go to the site where Najula is, they've had a pretty easy time just taking it over, rushing it down, getting to that post plant, and then playing it where the operator is at its worst. Oh, oh no, Eddie, that can't be happening. But at least he manages to find the shot at the end. Teddy Nadatha, though, trades it back before the trade has even happened, and Remill is trying to make his way through, but he's walking. Oatmeal peeks on, and Remill looks away at the worst time. That's immediately 40 seconds, not even, no, 20 seconds in the round. That's already a men advantage for Pepe Gang. DA are still committed. They're still holding down this mid-market position. Understanding of guns dropped, Teddy's just holding the flank, and it's crazy to say, but... The flank even happening. The jeweler with the operator going all the way on the back lines. And the op shot missed again. Teddy uh, he hits the hard ones, lands the easy ones. Or excuse me, I mean the other way around. That that was a quick scope. But the Viper peeking on doesn't manage to land the transfer. Now all the way on the end. Knives popped. He should be checking this corner. I mean, you have to be wise to this. But the shots are missed. How does he miss every single knife? It's the teammate to trade it out and pushed up all the way. Najula may be regretting his decision to go all the way up that long B. He has that teammate in the spawn. The spike will not be denied. Lives oh no. might end up losing his life here. No, just at the nick of time. He gets all the way back, but the leg the shot. Leg. Oh, the pistol remaining. out, and Najula is good to land that one. One versus two now for Toucan. Understands where at least one is. Smoke on the spike! It doesn't even matter! Najula has no idea! He looks the wrong way! And straight through the smoke, 2K gets the instant one tap. Six rounds now for DA. Now they just had too many angles to check. You gotta be a little bit more methodical before you tap the spike because Toucan is there to shut it down. One to six. The rounds are getting closer here, but it's not enough. Pepe Gang aren't able to close these ones out. And, you know, even this play from uh, from DA here felt like they, they just waited a bit too long. They could have pushed A and just gotten sight for free, but they wanted to go towards that B site, try and punish, you know, everyone going through a little bit faster. And, man, that's a lot of shots fired so early. You know, this one, at least there's no big guns on the side of the defense. Pepe King have nothing to fight with. It's just a bunch of sheriffs. It's a police force right now on the side of the defense, but... Some shock darts to try and deny the plant for the time being. Ad does take a little bit of damage, but Nadatha, I mean, he needs to work through an entire ice wall. He wants to get through, but that's not ice on the other side. It's Radiantite, and this 
all the stuff for Divine Ascension to steal right now. Najula's on the flank. Short A cutting the entire team in half. But how much can he activate? There's a smoke there. Can't look through. Nadalta's got one. But Najula finally is able to activate. What has happened? There's a bunch of whips. Missed shots from Divine Ascension. Teddy is on the site trying to recover. Surely they'd run him down right straight through the wall. They want to try and spam. Missing the shots even more. It's up to the Phantom on the other Eddie. end of the smoke. And he gets both of them lined up. Headshot into both the players on the site and DA cleanup. Every single round, it feels like Pepe Gang are getting so close to actually winning out the round, and then someone just goes big. Someone gets that multi kill, and then the last round, it was Teddy. The headshot collapsed through the smoke to finish it off. And it goes up to that seven round count. One to seven so far. Gun still bought up from both sides. Nedula is back on the operator. But there's so many ultimates in order to deal with the either team. There's the raised rocket that can be used if everyone's bunched up over towards this hookah. There's the operator on this B site that can punish anything. Oh, oh no! He, what? He gets out. He, he hit the drone or something because one of the players on Divine Ascension right now is half HP, but ah, he peeks back into it. it. He, he floats into the Huntress Fury. That is absolutely dis disastrous. He's been having so much success with the Operator, and right now it's just getting shut down. Oatmeal at least has a frag holding down that hookah. Doesn't even want to go for a flank. He just wants to stay on the site because Viper only has gone down wise enough from this defender to stay on this position. And Remilt does get taken out. One of the most impactful players right now on the side of Divine Ascension. In fact, the top frag for them. Teddy's also been taken out, but Tabs doesn't have his gun out in time. He was able to do so much. There was so much potential, but this time, three versus two now. Plant going down. Retake on. Nadal is still alive, so it's not like you can count him out at this point, but the wall is going in the wrong position, but the shot is also missed. Wibes, not sure if he's aware of the positioning. It doesn't even matter because the shot goes through this wall. And Oatmeal takes him down from the short position, but now it's up to Nadal. He has to go for the push. He has to be the one to go for the aggression. Straight through the wall. He's getting pinged as well. Toucan can decide to go for a wall bang, but the shots sticking are being missed it. again. He's sticking all the way through, and he's able to get it all the way. Even the kill at the end. Toucan can't win out the fight. That's a second round, at least, for Pepe Gang. Yeah, those wall those boxes are completely wall bangable too. Unfortunately, just a little bit off on where the person was. It allows Nadatha to stick the spike, even though it got down towards that two versus three retake. They recover the operator as well. That should go back into the hands of Najula. Actually, no. Looks like Nadatha is going to keep that one for himself. A lot of ultimates used. Viper only has this oh, Viper spit that can be just door. let down in this A short and kind of deny the A push from going through it, force the other players to go towards that B site where the operator is. Actually, sorry, where the rest of the team is. Well, I'm surprised that they did end up putting the op on the site with the Viper on it, but I mean, I guess if you can treat your Sheriff like an operator, it doesn't even matter. Health damage taken from taps, but he managed to land the one tap onto the opposing player nonetheless. Wibes even with his opposing Sheriff. Wants to try and find a response. They're all coming back because there was nothing found on the Lurk, but the shot is missed. There's a leg shot, but Najula's got the knives, and in fact, those miss as well. And Toucan, still maybe a chance. This man has a rifle. He drops all the way back, has the spike, so doesn't want to take any excessive risks. Jumping into Hookah. The defense looks to take retake control of that position, and they technically have because the attackers have all dropped back, but Remo trying to lurk back onto the A is going to find no success. Smoke is going to take him down very, very low on HP, and one bullet was all that was needed to finally remove him from the round. Another lurk. Taps, though, is at very, very low HP, but Ad doesn't even land a single shot in the transfer. A jump out. Tukan's got another, but he's going to have to ace if he wants to win this round. 30 seconds remaining to do so. Seconds it's heading towards the Viper's Pit as well. Oh, it got put down. Nah, no. That's, well, that was, as soon as he put that knife out, that was, that was the round right there and then. <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised from the decision to actually put that Viper's Pit down. It feels like so much area denial. Maybe, you know, Viper only just stuck out of the Viper's Pit a little bit too long. But either way, mm. it works out for them. Maybe baits the knife out anyway. And then a three yeah. to seven in the <laughs> and two rounds left in this half. If they can go towards Pepe Gang, it makes the comeback that much easier once the side switch. Nedula still back onto that operator. Can get the picks early. It's a three stack on the A site this time. But DA, they're heading back towards this B where they want the revenge. 
Oh, and the Julius made so much happen so far. And he, uh, that was almost a collateral even another shot. But the hold from this defense is indomitable. It's just not losing. They cannot die off these positions. Taps has the weaker weapon, but secures all three kills. Dart even through. I mean, no one else is there. He doesn't even need the help from the Sova. One versus five now for Teddy. He's got a Sheriff. And he technically has knives. I don't think he wants to go for it, though. Dash is right out. Need ops to at least pick up a guy. He, he can't recover a weapon. <laughs> the, re the, the rest of the team is dead up forward, and maybe he's heard some noise and looking Snap. the wrong way. Top is finally falls. Ah, it's so awkward. A swing out, a dink. A very nice shot from Teddy. Good transfer. Good tracking, but... Not enough bullets in this chamber. Can't finish off oatmeal. So four to seven. Pepe gang are on a streak. Yeah, it was a nice try. Taps comes up big towards this hooker. I felt like ZA just pushed out a little bit too fast without everyone being on the same page. And Taps really just cleans up there. Double Jeez. operator setup here, Anton, for the side of Pepe Game. They've been known to do this, but this time the operator is in the hands of Viper only. Someone you don't necessarily expect to be very good on that op, since most of her of util is air, like vision denial. Far. You need you need vision for an operator. Ooh, vision though. He gets the vision, misses the shot though. Teddy, I mean, he knows there's an op on the other side of this, right? And he peeks on in. He wants to take cover, but there's a dart that reveals him behind the box and he gets spammed out completely. Teleport gets the information that they're coming back, but Ad even falls off of that and Toucan tries to trade it back. He gets one kill on one of the former best players of Pepe King, but it's not even him doing all the work right now. And Najula is chiming in so well with that op. Up on top, on the high ground right now. Remo is very, very low on HP. And he has to push up to be able to be seen. But there is a flank. Tap has, I think his gun has been spotted. And it has. But the spike has already been surrendered all the way at the back of... What is that? Back of you all? How does that even make sense? I um, don't even know how that was committed so far. But there is no chance for Remill to win this round. Oatmeal, a great drive by a headshot. And five now for Pepe Gang. Four in a row at the end of that sides. first half. Yeah, great by Pepe Gang to stabilize there. They were looking too good, but they got four in a row. They're able. And now it's all up towards this pistol round here. Now, if they can win out this pistol, they'll even it up. And it goes back to what we saw last map, this kind of crawl where one team gets a round and the other team gets another round. It gets a little bit more even. But DA, they're on this defensive half. They have the Sage. They can slow down any of this, these pushes that Pepe Gang throw at them. That's a default wall here, actually. It's just, he's just going to wall up. I think he's going to deny Hookah completely. I mean, they can get in, but getting out is going to be the hard part. His slows, his nades, and everything for the rotate. But, excuse me, not nades, mollies. Excuse me, that's the wrong team. Ooh. <laughs> well. Oh, I hate to laugh at that, but uh, <laughs> he had it lined up, and then he moves just a little bit. I mean, that's like next level caster curse, right? I'm like, he's just going to wall Hookah, but... That, that never, I've never seen that before. Teddy, I mean, <laughs> going for some fights. I don't even want to say what might happen, just at risk of cursing him. I don't know, push uh, on through. Teleport up. He's not even, you know what? Is that an anti-curse? He doesn't even take a fight. I'm like, I don't even want to call anything, but they all <laughs> don't even, They nothing happens. They go as far away from the action as possible. Shorty on wives, pistols on everyone else. And Remill, he does end up getting a kill. Dink on the ad, so trades back. Teddy is the one to go through the teleporter behind the entire attacking team, and they're just getting pinched. Teddy goes around, gets every single kill right now, and they have no idea what this last player is. Throwing the mollies, Viper only has to make those work. He has to get at least some frags right now, and it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Gets one molly kill, but it's stuck all the way at half, so next player can end up tanking the health to be able to defuse it. Second pistol round on Bind goes to DA. Yeah, that was a little interesting of a play. Throw everyone what? into the teleporter, but yeah, you know, that wall actually, if it it didn't it didn't matter in the end, but hey, it, it could have done something. I, I I don't know, but <laughs> in the end, you know, it was an interesting play. Everyone go through the teleporter, but the flank was actually already there. They just got mm -hmm. pinched everywhere on the site, and oh, it's a different wall this time. Wives. Looking to do a wall that I've seen Andrew Sheesh on a different team here in the Phantom Series do Wait, that's time and time again, but he he's not Andrew Sheesh. He, he doesn't make it. That's not how you do it, though. You can well. <laughs> uh, speaking of how you do it, I mean, as surely showing us how we'd use 
with his machine guns. He's shown so much prowess on those weapons across two different maps. I mean, three different maps so far on Ascent, as well as the previous Vice Box. And now it's up to Toucan to hold it down with another unconventional gun. The Bucky is up to mid. Ad gets another one inside that shower. And they're, I mean, they're just running it down. There's, there's not really too much to say about this round. Up to a short shot down by two different players on that A positions. And that's a very, very quick anti-eco for Divine Ascension. Yeah, I mean, DA's buys have just been so good throughout this entire series. Whenever you know they're up in uh, guns, they'll pretty much be able to clutch it out every single time and keep most of their guns alive to make sure that their econ is set up as well. Rifles in hand for Pepe Gang here now. Wait, man, why is this all of these different walls? But he yeah. still pulled them. Three, three for, you know, three for three? Oh, he's not going for it. Oh come on! Show us the ah. Oh, unfortunately, he's just gonna do the, probably the standard wall towards hook as everyone from Pepe Gang is making their way through. Are oh. you kidding? <laughs> are Are you kidding me? Or why? How? Just why? He's honestly the most unlucky sage I've ever seen, other than maybe me in my ranked game where I went zero and seven that one time. But we don't talk about that. That is very unfortunate. I mean, all three walls have failed. This time he loses his life for it, and it looks like the Sova might end up getting headshot to the wall. Not quite. Nadatha can manage to land the shot, actually. Very nice from Remill, and adds straight to the smoke once again. He is so, so good with this weapon, and this time taken off guard. Viper only at least manages a trade, keeps the man count even. Both of these guys go through the teleporter. Divine Ascension seems to have the read, but it's all a ruse. They're going back towards this A site. And they have no idea. Divine Ascension, they're, they're sticking their ground. They're staying on this B. Reyna finally decides to double back, but it's slow. Doesn't know. They, they have no idea whether this player is in their spawn or not. They have to clear absolutely everything. The plant is finally going down and remill. Now he finally understands. The Sova is going to be making his way around, but waiting for the team. Smart by them, but they again, they have to clear absolutely everything. They can't leave any corner unchecked. The places where both of these people are playing as well, if a flash is in their face, it's only a near sight. They'll still be able to see the Reyna. Mm -hmm. Dart. I don't know if that spots anything. Just knows that no one's in the bench position. Now a smoke, and the health is already low on Reyna, so she gets taken out immediately. Toucan I was looking the wrong direction. Back into the dark cover goes Taps, and goes a bullet into Toucan's head. Yeah, definitely got a little bit close, but the post-plant positioning from Pepe Gang was just too good. So, yeah, they're going to go up towards that 6-9 round count. They're getting a little nice. bit closer to uh, <laughs> to evening it up just a little bit. But they weren't able to keep a lot of their guns alive here, Anton. Their econ isn't necessarily looking the best. Jula will get a gun for his troubles, but they need to make this next round count in order to make sure they can secure the rest of their econ. Nice from Teddy as well. He's outside that shower, looking towards that brimstone. But the question is, is he going to want to fight? Adds the one to take the damage against Najula. That was the entry kill, and he just walks right out. Doesn't want to give anything up. Now the opposing Jets looking to take the position with the blades, but sees it and finds absolutely nothing. This entire push is going towards this B, and the Bucky is not good enough to land a one-shot. Toucan gets taken out along with his teammate that was defending long, and sight for free taken by Pepe Gang. And it's a two versus four already. The knives are out, so he has to try and go for a fight, but there's no one else on this lurk. Wastes both updrafts, gets over the wall, and picks up a rifle on it but a two versus four is still very oh. okay maybe a bit of karma for nadatha shooting through the smoke last time and eddie uh, hold on a second two versus two now on for this massive clutch now it's all left to oatmeal one left alive no idea what these players are playing but he lands the headshot great transfer on the teddy but he can't complete the clutch wives is the one to finish it out and at two versus five divine ascension take ten a two versus four. I think almost a two versus five retake if that initial pick wasn't gotten early by Teddy. But they still end up winning it out. Teddy, man, he just goes aggressive. He gets the first pick. Two versus four retake. Goes through the teleporter. A pre-fire onto someone in hookah. All the meanwhile, Wibes is there killing someone through a smoke. Like, how much of that is luck and how much of that is just not game knowledge, man? Everyone... From Pepe Gang yeah. just getting a little bit too comfortable and they end up giving the round away. That is 
certainly there is one aspect of luck that cut off from the swan uh, there there's no excuse for that there's nothing you can do if you're that player inside an elbow and teddy i mean he's looking for some more he wants to find some more success like he did last round but this time he's first line of defense and in fact driven all the way back into dot gets a kill with the pistol onto him but i don't think they're gonna read this wall finally shooting a bit too high wives can't manage to deny this plant in fact gets absolutely nothing for his troubles finally a good wall for him but he doesn't find any single kill even doesn't catch the exits jula at least loses his life to ads ultimate so it's not an entire waste does manage to gain the space as well even the Molly's likely going to be on the spike soon. Oatmeal gets sprayed down. Remill is looking, and they, of course they just stick it completely through. Oh. Half HP, okay. but stuck half. There's no way no. right there. No oh. way! Oh. Yeah. Taps, Taps needs to Taps needs to die here. He's not. Oh wait, no, he still. Ooh. Okay, he still gets money. Okay, just because they were able to plant the spike, he still will be able to buy up fully, even in. You know, in saving his life in that past around. He got so. If Viper only, I think, landed the first shot, they might have had the chance. There was potential. But mm -hmm. either way, DA, they go up to that 11 round count. Buy round from both sides. Teddy still has that operator. And it's a double Odin setup from Wives as an ad. And so far, Anton, as long as we don't talk about Wives, they'll be able to do his walls correctly. Honestly, like, we, we didn't even see it last time. And that's when, that's when he pulls it out. That's when it works. And that's the, I mean, it didn't really work, but it <laughs> it gave him the benefit of the doubt. Oh, oh, no. Control taken. Oh, oh, speaking of oatmeal, I mean, he's going right in, isn't he? Remill gets taken out by the second ulti, so two already spent. Toucan, though, is in the corner and behind the Viper's pit is not able to catch. Oh, just barely manages to finish the kill. But on the spawn, these guys want to push. They want to get aggressive. I don't know if that's the right decision, Sparky, because they're all losing their lives on Pepe Gang. Last one is spotted towards that long position. Petty lands an unfortunate jump. Doesn't land the op shot just for the time being, but the spray teleport oh, out, but the no. molly is perfect. What? No way he read that. How does Ad even? He's doing like he's honestly doing calculus in his head. Why is he named Ad? Name him derivatives or something. What? Ta 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 how? The Brimstone even knew that that person was in the corner. Like they saw him and he still mollies the other side with the five head knowing that the omen would TP out. That is. I get it. What? How? Okay. Okay. <laughs> this, this man can see the future. This man sees the future, and so far, the future is looking like 3-0 for DA. They're on match point. They have the res available just in case anything goes awry, and maybe the awry thing could be Nedula. He has the operator, and he needs to come up big in this round. Oh, Judge the... Whoa, Remill. Questionable peak there. He's got the close range weapon, goes for the longer fight, and of course, Ndoth is going to win that any day of the week. Are they just trolling right? I can't... What? Is that a what? That's real. I, it doesn't matter, but like, <laughs> I guess. Nice. Hunter's Fury to try and deny, and it actually does for the time being. It denies a third time as well. That's a lot of time being brought off the board, but I don't know if it did any damage necessarily. That might be Viper tagged at least once, and a teleport going through. The Sage is going to take a fight with this raise, but oh! But don't time. Let's the res target at least live to fight another day, but until Oatmeal has something to say about it, Teddy. Out through spawn now gets shut down by Nadatha and Toucan trying to trade it back. He needs to get every single kill in order to win out this round and take the series, but it's just not gonna happen. Oatmeal has a triple kill, picks up that Odin as well. There's a lot of upgrades on the side of Pepe Gang. Yeah, DA just trying something new with that wall, you know, wall bang uh operator shot i mean it's not really going to work out well and it does gift away an operator and odin over toward pepe gang but pepe gang are still five away from just tying it up sending us into overtime and so far da seem to have control over this round they're going to save they don't have enough money to buy up towards those rifles but it's a lot of shotguns for them so far three maybe even four and they're all in these cheeky little corners Oh my lord. This is literally, there, there's an opposite loadout. This is like, this is like what you call it, like on a, a super mirror comp, like an anti, it's weird how we call identical lineups on both sides of mirror comps because a mirror is like backwards, right? But never, never mind. This is like <laughs> actual mirror, like the opposite.
We have the longest range weapons on the side of Pepe Gang and the closest range on Divine Ascension and the close range chimes true. Toucan has already got an entry. I mean, that's exactly how you one hit with a buck. You do exactly what he did just there. And ops right now, not only just one, but two operators, one already lost on the side of Nadatha, recovered by Toucan. Given over to Teddy, but this short range weapon is a bit too short for the job. Wives can't land that shot. Health damage, but not very much more in an ultimate. Remill has to get out. That's a bit interesting, and he at least gets one. Maybe a bit of... ends up being worth it. Najulaga, though, gets that off shot done, and straight to the teleporter. Chops is ready for that flank, and Teddy, though, with that off recovered at the back of the site, is trying to do some work, but Pfeiffer only takes him down. And in the corner, they know exactly where this guy is at, is getting pushed out by every single piece of utility, and there's nothing more for him to say. They'll be able to recover the operator as well, but considering the guns that DA had and they, so many shotguns uh, on the table, they were able to take three down with them. That's pretty worth it in their books. They'll break the econ just a little bit. Money still is in the hands of Pepe Gang, but now the rifles are in play for DA. This is their bread and butter. They can do whatever they want here now. And it looks like so far they aren't trolling. They're not playing in spawn. They're playing on the sites this time. They're looking to take those aggressive peaks. Oh, oh guts, it's a five people again. No default at all. It's the Viper, excuse me, the Jet is the only one going through that shower position. That dart, he spots out. Oh, that spotted four. That spotted every single player coming through short. Teddy's going to have to win this fight right now. And he actually lands the shots. It's good enough. He takes shower control. And he knows where every single one of these players are. Backsight goes to Boombot. Ad takes a little bit of damage. But also backsight goes Nadatha. And he falls all the way on the ground. This is it. Surely there's no way that Taps does this one more time. Another one versus four on the board for this Omen. This time there's no flank. This time the teammate is so far displaced from the rest of the team. But now the teleport. Where is he going? This? Long B is the decision. And Remill is still here. Knife out running. Taps has to be ready for this angle. He has to check this corner. But oh, no way. Straight no to the way. teleport again. It's not going to be in time. Remill shuts him down. That goes the series. Divine Ascension. Take it. Three to zero. That was a crazy series, especially toward the end. It felt like the big brain DA players just absolutely read Pepe Gang on their macro plays with the Molly onto the open bit and man and the Omen ultimate. Taps just got red over and over again, even though it felt like he would get so close every single time. Dude, the three potential, not only not one, not two. Three potential one versus fours. That last one, okay, fine. Didn't come down to a one versus one. Wasn't unlucky. Well, I guess you could call it. I don't know what Taps is doing, smoking or something <laughs> like that. But honestly, there was a chance. If he if he just goes in, if he's wary enough to check the corner, oh my gosh, there was a chance. If he just goes for the fight, even they were so displaced from one another. It's the omen that has the decision to teleport wherever he wants. And it's like, oh no, I think that was one of the most doable one versus fours that he's had today. And honestly, it is sad for him because he's, he's not looking too good on the scoreboard. But those moments when he is last alive, he shines and he shows up. I'm not sure what it is. I, he's got to channel that inner energy, that she that he gets when he's in the one versus fours and just run that the entire map. I don't know what it's going to take. Yeah, That is the solution, I think, for Pepe Gang right now because these these three maps, they all got so close. Teddy, this time solo carrying the team with a remill further behind him than he usually is at this point. And it's like... The, the, the scoreline of 3-0 does not even come close to telling the story of these three maps. All of them, almost almost all three of them, 9-3 or 9-13s. But Pepe Gang, they put up a fight not only in the individual rounds, but every single map, they got close. And it's just over, they could not get over the finish line, not once. And it's, honestly, I had faith, but Taps, once again, he just doesn't show up until he really ends up needing to. And it's still not enough, which is the saddest yeah. part to say, but yeah. I mean, it does get extremely close and keep in mind that DA, you know, they've been undefeated throughout groups. They have they haven't had to play it in playoffs so far, but even then they were just looking so dominant. Pepe Gang, they were two and three. Pepe Gang had a great showing. They got so close, even in this best of five series. And this last map, it was the first time Nadatha 
wasn't at the top of the scoreboard but even if we're just not looking at average combat score itself look at first bloods five first bloods for nadatha five first bloods for najula it felt like every single time the first bloods were going in the favor of pepe gang but they just weren't able to convert they'd either get traded out and then bleed out the actual uh the actual site allow for that post plant to come through and then they just aren't able to play that post plant scenario or it just in the end it just works out that a multi kill goes through for teddy or something like that where everyone mm -hmm. from da just out frags the enemy team yeah that that is a i i honestly didn't even notice that until you pointed it out but the um, Pepe Gang actually won the first blood battle like by a lot. They won it by what three, four, five? They won it by like five. There are a total of eight first bloods for Divine Ascension. That means they actually won like eight, let's see, five rounds where they didn't end up getting entries. That's absolutely ridiculous. Ten on Adolfa and Azula combined with Tap Spiper only adding up to three. So 13 first blood. They mathematically this is not yeah. how it works but let's just pretend in our heads because it's kind of a funny number but for the same number of rounds that pepe gang had entry killers divine ascension won the same number of rounds what's it what's if that's not up to like like you said someone getting someone going huge someone going massive like teddy getting like a quad kill or something like that there's really no hope because pepe gang they, they land those entries every single time but it's always a recovery every time that two versus four on that b site it's absolutely unreal that stuff should never happen but somehow divine ascension find every single hole in the defense of pepe gang every single angle that they're not looking at the omen getting caught out by that hookah player everything it just works out for them and it's so perfect and divine ascension they pull that out so many times it's not even just a fluke it's not even just one round they get lucky they do it consistently that's what let them take this series over the storm yeah, it, it really felt like DA, they were just able to stabilize even after those initial picks went the way of Pepe Gang. And a after that, they played really well as a team. You could see them trading each other out. They weren't really playing very individualistically. They weren't, you know, stashing that operator by itself and then going to play another site. They backed up their oppers. They backed up their supports well. They're able to trade each other out as they rush onto the site. And they were very meticulous about checking all of their angles too. It never felt like Pepe Gang really able to just find that corner and get those multi-fry kills yeah definitely so with 